Last night, something remarkable and unusual happened. Dozens of business owners from the central east side gathered in the evening to let Portland's mayor, Ted Wheeler, know how they feel about crime and homelessness and neglect from the city. Spoiler alert, they're not happy. As I mentioned earlier, we don't often get to hear from them, so tonight we're going to spend some extra time on all this. Let's begin with their frustrations. Here are two comments from Kyle Ransom. He's the CEO of the company Showers Pass, which makes popular coats for cyclists and others. We're on Southeast 6th. There was a massive camp right down there underneath 99. It was horrible for six months. The city finally came in, or the camp came in, swept it. What did they do? They swept it round the corner in front of our building. We now can't even get a delivery into our building. I actually had another instance where this was happening. We were pleading with the city to come and clean it up because I had investors from Asia coming to look to make a multi-million dollar investment in a new brand that we're launching, Vavolt, which is e-bikes. The individual arrived from Taiwan and said, yes, we want to invest in your business. We are not investing it in this location because the building was surrounded by homeless camps. Can you imagine what that was like? Yes, I know our homeless population needs help, and we'll get to that in a bit. But put yourselves in the shoes of a business person trying to make a living in Portland, trying to help their employees make money, and serve the public by making good products. Imagine doing all of that in a place surrounded by homeless camps. Here's another CEO. This is Marcy Landolfo from Rains PDX. That's a clothing company. She's explaining she recently closed one of her stores for good after 15 break-ins. She wants to know if the city can use federal law enforcement to clear out the criminals. Is that an option? If we can clean out the crime, then we can hopefully focus better on our citizens that need and want the help to get off the streets, that need and want the drug treatments, and you know, separate that out from the outright criminals that have come here to exploit our city exploit our resources and mostly exploit the good nature of all of us because now we're all sick of it. So just wondering if, if it's an option to just address and clean out the crime on a very public, outward and visible level to send, you know, to just send that note, we're not going to tolerate it. Well, Mayor Ted Wheeler did not answer directly, which actually means no. But he did say that for the first time in a long time, the Portland Police Bureau has hired more officers than it lost this year, bringing 117 officers on board so far. That brought a round of applause in the building. Wheeler also said he's frustrated by low-level criminals not being held accountable. I'm a huge fan of restorative justice for one time. But if it's 15 times, that needs to be a more severe penalty in my opinion. And we at the local level don't direct what those penalties are. We don't control the courts, we don't control the prosecutors, we don't control the jail capacity, and uh, ultimately we have to operate within the confines, of course, of the Constitution. Of course. Another business owner said a vandal snuck into his six-story building and flooded it with 30,000 gallons of water and now he has to rebuild. He wants to know about private security. Is there an opportunity to partner with the city if private equity would come to the table to help with neighborhood watch, professional people? No, you can't recommend them. Can't tell us what to do tonight, but I'm willing to sit on a committee, put money in, I brought my checkbook tonight, so that we can have eyes on things from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Well, the mayor didn't answer that question directly either. The gathering was organized by something called the Central East Side Industrial Council. That's a group that spread over 622 acres of Portland's Central East Side. It includes 1,400 employers, about 22,000 employees. The executive director told me today that many have pushed the city of Portland to help fight crime and homelessness and drug use for a long time. But last night, it appeared the mayor was finally willing to take action. He promised to launch a 90-day plan to help clean up the area, similar to the plan that took place in the Old Town neighborhood this last spring and summer. That included things like more focused police work with more police patrols. 
The effort wasn't perfect, but it did help reduce crime and garbage. The city swept several homeless camps there as well. Many business owners worry about the dangers posed by some who live in the camps. Some have mental health issues, some have drug issues, some have both. Another business owner, Angie Garcia, who owns a preschool, raised the issue of involuntary commitments. Uh, we've had violence, we've had staff members chased with machetes, machetes, like we have had it all for a very, very long time because we are housed right across the street from St. Francis. So all of this, none of this is new to me. One of the things that, the specific question I have for you today, and it is a difficult question to ask because I am a social worker at heart, it's what I've been trained to do, so I have compassion uh, in my heart, and I also understand as a social worker that sometimes the things that we do are Band-Aids and they do not help. And I think that we have come to this place that we have needed to come to for a very long time where we cannot allow folks as Jesse so eloquently put, to live on the streets and think that that's compassion. The mayor of New York City just announced that they are going to be hospitalizing folks involuntarily who are mentally ill. And I'm wondering at what point do we decide that something similar like that needs to be done because hearing that folks are being eaten by rats does not sound compassionate to me at all. And so we have to ask ourselves at what point do we say that yes, they're are folks who want us not to take these steps, but that we must take these steps. That issue, involuntary commitment, it's coming up more and more often these days. Our Evan Watson recently did a series of in-depth reports in which experts explained how the pendulum may have swung just a little bit too far. Many now feel it's too hard to force someone with severe mental health issues to get help against their will, even if they're living on the street. Wheeler did answer that question. You raised the very difficult question of involuntary commitment. And I'm going to be resoundingly excoriated for saying what I'm about to say. But I'm going to go back and base it on my moral and ethical judgment. And this is just personally me, that when I see people walking through the elements without appropriate attire, often naked, they're freezing to death, they're exposed to the elements, they're out of their, you know, they, they, I don't even know if they know where they are or who they are, they need help and they need compassion. And I am told by those in the legal system who are engaged with this question of getting people into help, whether it's voluntary or involuntary, the threshold is too high. And so I would support a hard look at the legislative level of our involuntary commitment laws. That last part, that involuntary commitment, it's not going to happen anytime fast. That would have to come from the state legislature, which will start meeting in about two months. But that 90 day plan to help clean up the central east side, well, that could get going soon. I'm told there's a meeting this Friday to iron out the details and the timetable. We'll keep an eye on it and let you know how it's going.